Hello and welcome back to the Mario Kart Wii World last episode. We raced in the Shell Cup on 150cc and in this episode we're going to be racing in the Banana, Banana, that, yeah, that new fruit confirmed, Banana. The Banana Cup on 150cc and we are going to be using Daisy. Yeah, Daisy. And we are going to be using the Zip Zip Yahoo! with manual transmission of course. And I did go back to uh, star rank the Shell Cup by double stars this time. Alright, let's race in the Banana Cup, let's do it. So I'm recording this video not even 10 minutes after I just finished my re my playing through Captain Toad Treasure Tracker again. Uh, because as you may remember from an earlier episode, I am uh, in the- oh dear, I'm currently in the process of being brutally myrtleized. Myrtleized? Like, murdered and brutalized in the same word. Myrtleized! New word, confirmed. Uh, of trying to get as many of my- tr trying to get, in, get as many games onto the same consoles as possible, uh, because obviously when I go to- when I go to college, I'm going to want to have to uh, like ne next <laughs> next August when I start packing, or I mean I'm gonna start packing this. So next next summer when I start packing for college, I'm going to want to have to I'm gonna I'm gonna want to try to reduce the number of uh, consoles that I have just you know so I don't have them I have more speed. Yeah, 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 whatever I talked about this in the previous episode. Um, just you know I, I don't want to have to lug every single console I have to console with me to console to con college consoles to college. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so, uh, so I bought Captain Toad Treasure Tracker for the Switch, which I was really hesitant to do at first because I'm like so much of that game revolved around the gamepad's gyroscopic controls. So I was really, really curious to see how they were going to handle it for the Switch, and actually, it's really, really good. It is easily the definitive version of the game. It like for as much as I love the gyroscopic controls of the Wii U, what they've done for the Switch to make it compatible is actually really impressive, and it would have made it would have made making my walkthrough a lot easier because for the level where you have to clear a course using only 10 shots from the cannon, I had to put numbers on the screen, like in editing, showing which blocks I was hitting, um, where, because the the actual first person perspective in the cannon didn't show up on the TV, it only showed up on the gamepad, and I did have a gamepad capture card. But on the Switch version, because obviously you can't do that, it just shows the cannon on the TV screen, so that's... That's awesome. It would have been great if I had done my walkthrough on this version instead of that one. Um, but the, the the main game is the same aside from that kind of stuff. So it's definitely definitely my defend. And I'll, I'll, the loading times are faster. Uh, that's also nice. And the, the graphics are definitely. I mean, not that the Wii U version looked terrible. But the Wii U look, version looks really really good. But the Switch version looks even better. So you know, just definitely if you're gonna if you have both a Switch and a Wii U and you haven't bought the game yet, get it on the Switch. Uh, there's also DLC, um, this co-op, this co-op mode, which I haven't tried co-op mode yet, don't know. But what I do know is that they made some significant changes to the bonus content, Um oh, no. Oh, can we not lose the first race? That'd be great. If we, if we could not lose the first race, that would be phenomenal. I mean, I, mean, I don't really care, because I'm, probably I'm gonna have to end up replaying all of these anyway, but, you know, it's just, it'd be, it'd be nice if I, if I didn't have to do it for just, j just once, that, that'd be... That'd be great. Oh, actually, wait a minute. Hold on. Red Shell Waluigi out of the way. That is what. Yep. Ha-ha! <laughs> Would you look at that? We still emerged victorious. Nice. Anyway, yeah, so they, they made a, a lot of changes to the bonus content, and the first thing that they made a... Well, okay. Not the first thing. The last thing they made a change to, but the last thing I saw, because, of course, you have to complete the rest of the bonus before you unlock this, is Mummy Me Mace Forever, and for anybody who's been watching my channel for at least two years, you know how much fun I had with Mummy Me Mace Forever back in 2017. Let's talk about that in the next race. I really, really hate Mummy Me Maze Forever. Not because it's hard, because I, I do like a challenge, um, and it does it does feel good when you finally beat it. But the reason why I hate it is because 
so you have this incredible puzzle game. Like, Captain Dr. Tracker is hands down one of my favorite Wii U games on the Switch. It might actually be my favorite Wii U game. And it's one of the best puzzle solving games. Like, the three best puzzle solving games I've ever played, I think, are Portal or Portal 2. I might put them in the same category. Um, as far as. Pu pu hmm. I, I don't know. I'd have to play them both again to see which one's better. Co op. Mm, I don't know. I, I'll, different discussion for a different time. Uh, Turing Test. Turing Test has had some of the most challenging puzzles in any video game I've ever played. And the Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Those are my top three. So that, that's, you know, that's pretty far up there. Um, so you have this incredible puzzle game with so many creative gameplay uh, th stuff. Gameplay stuff, yeah. So many creative additions for, like, so many creative puzzles to solve. And you finish the game. Like, the final challenge in a puzzle game is 50 floors of torture. 50 floors of running through a maze with cosmic clones, or mummy knees in this case, on your back. It's just like, who who thought that'd be a good idea? Who? I want to know who. I, I, I would like, I really love to know who in their right mind thought that, that would be a great idea as a finale to a puzzle solving game. So I hate it for that reason. Um, and it took me five hours to beat it last summer, or not thought, 2017 summer. Because, oh, I, oh dear god. It took me f four days to do it. The first day I tried it for two hours and then I said, I can't do this anymore. I, it's mentally straining and I, it's not good for me to keep trying this. So I took a break. The next day I came back, I tried it for, please, okay, you're gonna hit me. The next day I came back, I tried it for an hour and then I said, I can't keep doing this. Day three I came back, tried it for an hour. Day four I came back, tried it for an hour and then I finally freaking beat it. So, you know, um, what's it? It was very, it, it, it's a ridiculously challenging thing. Um, like, it, it's easily the hardest thing in the entire game, and not fairly so. So, I think Nintendo finally realized that, because they made some changes in the Switch version that I'll talk about in the next race. So, there's a chance, like a small, small chance, that because it's been two years since I've played Captain Thurston's Dragon on the Wii U that I might just be forgetting this, but I have a feeling if I, if, the, if this existed in the, mum, in the Wii U version, I would not have been stuck on it for four days. The, the, okay, so, there's a, so you know how, you know how there's a chance to get a mushroom uh, in each... Like, when you go to a new floor, there's a change, you'll also get a mushroom, so that if, if you took a hit in a previous level, you could replenish that hit. Well, they have a similar thing here, except instead of a- I mean, they also have mushrooms, but in, but in addition to the mushroom, you wanna know what they also have? Pickaxes! What can you use these pickaxes for? Well, to cut through the- oh, this is a bad choice. I, I don't wanna slow down, because- oh, uh, well, I mean, I'm gonna- the devil lightning strike, that's nice. I'm gonna try to slow down and maybe give it to Rosalina, but I didn't. I, I, she probably would have passed me. Try anyway. Um, you can use these pickaxes to cut through all the blocks to destroy the mummy me's, and just to get across to the end of the level immediately. You can destroy the enemies around you. You can destroy the every single enemy ex except maybe Bruce. I, I don't know. And the mummy me's behind you, which just makes it like a cakewalk at that point. Now, yes, you don't get a pickaxe in every level, but still. I, it, I, it took me an hour to beat this version of Mummy Maze Forever, when it took me five hours to beat the other one, because of those freaking pickaxes. Um, so, you know, that's nice, I suppose. I thought I wasn't going to make that one, but I made it. But, you know, it's it's, it's whatever. The, the, the main game is still unchanged. Another change they made, to, oh, by the way, before I get into that, if Nintendo was going to make changes to Captain Touch Target, like, to make Mummy Maze Forever easier, what I... I don't know if I said this two summers ago, but what they absolutely should have done is made it since that when you get to each rest stop, because there are three rest stops, when you get to the rest stop, it saves your progress. If you die, you revert back to that save point. The same way in the boss levels, when you go to a new section, it saves your progress at that section. It should be the exact same thing from Mummy Maze Forever. If you die, you can revert, you, you just go back to that, to that rest stop. You don't go all the way back to the beginning. So if you, because if you get to level 49, 
because it's 50 levels, so you get to level 49 and you die, guess what? You go all the way back to the beginning, no mercy given. Now, I would also say that if you implement this, you would also make it such that if you die, you do have to restart, but if you're still playing in the same play session, um, you can you have the option to go back to the rest stops. So that is how I would make it if I was behind the scenes of making Mummy Maze Forever. Then again, if I was if I had that kind of creative freedom, I would want to I would want to nuke the entirety of Mummy Maze Forever, like just in general because I I really hate the fact that that's the conclusion to Cat and Toe Treasure Tracker. But you know we're, we're just speculating here. Uh, and okay, mushrooms. Mushroom. I was hoping for a really good item. This is good. I might be able to win if I cut across here. Luigi, no, Luigi, no. Ah, we are victorious. Yeah, so there's one of the changes they made to Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, which I really, really like. So we'll get into that in the next and the final race. And we're definitely not getting a star ranking, but whatever. Something else I always really, I want to say hated, but it feels like a little too strong. Let's say disliked more than a little were the Expedition to the Sprixie Kingdom levels, because yeah, if you play Super Mario 3D World, it's it's nice, because technically Wii U, Captain Pink Treasure Tracker, and there's a reason why I specify Wii U, is a prequel to Super Mario 3D World, like a very, very loose prequel, um, but even then, like, the levels themselves are just the levels you play through in Super Mario 3D World, and Captain Toad is not meant to go through those levels, so it just, like, Ma Mario and the rest of the people in that game can jump, Captain Toad cannot. So I, I just, I, I, I don't know, that's, I mean, I, I guess it's a cool connection if you really, really like, uh, oh, I thought I was gonna go over the edge there, if you really, really like uh, 3D World, but I'm not the biggest fan, I mean, I don't hate the game, but it's, mmm. Not one of my favorites, I'll, I'll say that much. Um, I was considering doing a walkthrough of it, like one of my first walkthroughs in the channel was going to be 3D World, um, but I hadn't actually played it. Like, when I was playing on games to do, I was thinking, okay, I'll, I'll play through this game, see how to beat it, and then I'll go back and make a walkthrough. But I was playing through it, and I'm like, ah, this is just not that fun now, is it? Um, but, because this version of Captain Dragon Tracker is on the Switch, well, what other major 3D Mario game is available on the Switch? Super Mario Odyssey, which is a game that I absolutely love because it's basically Super Mario Galaxy 3, which I've been wanting for years. Um, so, what they did is instead of having levels based on 3D World, they have levels based on Odyssey, which is freaking incredible because Odyssey is amazing. And so, because the thing I always had a problem with, like, it, I, if it was just the 3D World levels in the same gameplay style as the main levels, I wouldn't care. But the problem is that you, they send Captain Toad through basically the levels that Mario in the game went through in the main game, which doesn't work, as should be self-explanatory. So what they've done instead is for the Sand, Metro, Cascade, and uh, Luncheon, I believe, Kingdoms, they, they, oh dear, they, re they, they create the environments, but in, in the little tiny box shape levels that the game had had up until the ball, so 11th place, and I get up three mushrooms, really. That's nice, okay. So I was very, very happy to see that they made that change because the, those box levels work a lot better with the, with the gameplay of Captain Toad Treasure Tracker because they are the gameplay of Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. And these big open levels that Mario and the game are meant to go through in 3D World, and that's a green shell that I couldn't get out of the way of. That's great. So, and I just got hit by a red shell. This is just, th this, this is, the, okay, wow. This is just like beat up magic day or something. It's like, hey, everybody, everybody take a turn at beating up, ma I'm not even gonna make it to the award ceremony. I don't have enough points to make it to the awards ceremony, I don't think. This might be the first, uh, episode in which... Actually, we might. We barely, barely made it to the awards ceremony. That was embarrassing.
You got first place. How do I keep getting B ranks? I should be getting E ranks for these terrible, terrible performances. Alright, well, time to go back in and... Hey, you won trophies in the 150cc shell and banana cup. You can play leaf cup. I don't feel accomplished in that, but whatever. Alright, well, time to go back in and star rank it. Again. That's it for this episode of Mario Kart Wii, so thanks for watching. See you for next time, and hope to catch you all tomorrow for some more Mario Kart Wii. Goodbye.